Hi guys, good morning. Welcome to another episode of MC Commute. Today we're going to be riding to the Motorcyclist Magazine office in Southern California on Suzuki's 2019 V-Strom 1000 XT Adventure. So strap on the helmet, let's go for a ride. Well, there she is guys, Suzuki's 2019 V-Strom 1000 XT Adventure. This is Suzuki's top of the line ADV bike. And for 2019, Suzuki's done some neat little things to this bike. It's important to remember in the grand scheme of things, this bike was overhauled last in 2014. It's not the newest, not the most contemporary. Leader class and leader above, leader class and above sized ADV bike. So to try to make up for that and try to give this motorcycle a little bit more pizzazz, Suzuki has unveiled this adventure model. So for 2019, this bike comes stock with those military grade panniers, comes with engine protection in the form of a skid plate and some crash bars. It also comes with heated grips and this foot bags are an accessory and this tank bag is an accessory right from Suzuki. These foot pegs are specifically are really neat because if you can see right here they're serrated on the edges and that helps give you grip against the bottom of your boot when you're riding in the wet or in slippery conditions. Yet still it has this rubber pad to help dampen the vibration from this 1037cc V-twin. So real neat design. I like that they're a little bit bigger than stock too. Uh, so good job Suzuki. Those are neat accessories. This bike as tested right here without the accessories is $14,600. So an exceptional value in the leader class ADV segment. So let's hop on it and see what it's like to ride. What's everyone think of this sound? Sounds great, doesn't it? That Suzuki's 1037cc 90 degree V-twin. We'll talk more about that in a second though. We're gonna get right into the ergonomics here. Ergonomics of this bike are very pleasant. I like the bend of the handlebar. It has a nice rearward sweep. A little bit tall, not too tall. A nice bend. Hold the street here. A nice bend. It's also a very skinny motorcycle. It's very slim. The saddle has a nice deep dish to it. It really cups your posterior very nicely. Uh, and at the same time, it's it's fairly wide. Like this is a kind of seat that you could uh, end up riding for a long, long, long time on. Like you could just log miles on this thing and be very comfortable. Taking a little detour due to traffic. So very favorable ergonomics. The only squawk might be is, you know, it's got a tall seat. All these ADV bikes have tall seats and they can be a little bit intimidating to ride if you don't have a lot of bike handling experience but at the same time this motorcycle is very narrow it is very not compact but well proportioned in terms of its size like even with these bags as you can see later you'll you still can split traffic fairly well And away we go again. Let's turn on the heated grips. It's not that cold out, but since we have them, we may as well use them. Push that button right there, and here comes the heated grips. It's nice that Suzuki finally added heated grips as a standard feature. It's been a while since I've ever recalled Suzuki ever doing that, so it's neat that they finally have that feature. So we like the ergonomics, the windscreens, it's not the biggest windscreen out there, but it's very functional. You can actually adjust the height of it via this toolless screw system. So it's not 
electronically adjustable, but you could do it by hand without any tools. Right now we have it in the middle position, so you could go one position lower and one position higher. Realistically, we probably should have moved it into the highest position, so we'll probably do that when we stop next time, but it's a pretty easy system to do. Just unscrew these four little plastic knobs and, and move the windscreen in the desired position and reattach it and away you go. Instrumentation on this bike, I like the large analog tachometer that's front and center. It's very easy to read. I like the old schoolness of the of just the dial face, which is cool. But this other information here, there's a lot of information there. There's engine coolant, air temperature, fuel level, MPGs, all that stuff, which is really nice, but it's very squished and condensed and hard to read. I wish Suzuki would employ or fit a new dashboard or dash display that was larger. It had larger fonts and larger readouts here. It doesn't need to be color, it doesn't need to be touchscreen. I mean, that would be nice, but if it was just larger, that, that's my only little gripe with, with, with the thing. But I do like the gear position indicator. I do like how we have fuel mileage right there. Speaking of fuel mileage, We've been averaging 32.9 mpg, 32.9 out of this 1037cc V-twin. Not the highest gas mileage, but this, when you're riding this bike, you're going to be accelerating very hard just because it's such a fun motorcycle, fun engine to, to, to play with. You got to remember the engine that powers this bike used to be the old TL1000S and TL1000R superbike engine. So that engine was actually designed for competition in the late 90s. If you remember, back then Ducati was on fire with its with its L-twin superbike engine, and the Japanese manufacturers were scratching their head like, "Oh my God, Ducati is whooping us. We need." We need a Superbike V-Twin. Enough with the inline fours. We need a Superbike V-Twin. So Honda made one, Suzuki made one, and they're great engines, but they just failed to make the power that they needed for Superbike competition. You know, you can't, you just can't beat an inline four when it comes to the max power. So after a few years of, of, of trying their hand at Superbike V-Twin racing, they threw in the towel and went back to their standard engine configurations which left this engine in Suzuki's arsenal and it actually works really well in this in this application the engine's very slim because of its v-twin architecture it has tremendous torque it's very smooth especially for a v-twin it has barely any engine vibration it's unbelievable and it sounds good. So for all those reasons, this engine lends itself very well into the V-Strom 1000. See, like, look how good we are at splitting traffic, even with bags. Unbelievable. The spike's just so well proportioned. So we have a lot of power, so we can get to where we gotta go quick. On the dyno, perhaps the most impressive thing about this engine to me is just on the dyno, this thing makes near peak torque from just above 3,000 RPM. So right now we have peak torque, right now. 65 foot-pounds is what maximum torque is and it arrives from just over 3,000 RPM, which is very, very impressive. Horsepower wise, this thing pumps out 85, I'm sorry, 87 ponies. 87 ponies, nearly 87 ponies at some 8,000 some RPM. So it's not the most powerful engine, but it still boogies and gets up and goes. My colleague Justin Dawes and I were riding bikes the other day for a video shoot. I was riding this V-Strom 1000 XT Adventure and he was riding the 2019 R1250 GS Adventure by BMW. And for sure the BMW has has the latest and greatest engine, makes a ton of power. But when we were drag racing from stoplights, 
he didn't really have anything on, on, on me. You know, he was in my mirror, but he couldn't pass me. So it just is a testament to this engine. And even though it's not the newest engine, even though it doesn't make the most absurd peak power numbers in terms of horsepower, it just gets it done. And again, the character of it's very playful. It's a fun engine. Like, listen to the sound. It sounds awesome. And that's with the stock exhaust. No wonder we're getting such poor MPG. Six speed manual transmission. Got a hydraulically actuated clutch. What that means is when you depress this clutch lever, it pushes hydraulic fluid through these lines and pushes a rod, which actually manipulates the clutch. Clutch lever pull is not too stiff. It's not too soft. Feels just right. I like that the clutch lever has adjustment so you can move the position in or out. Same thing with the front brake lever. Just feel that power, all that torque. This motorcycle comes stock with ABS, but this isn't any ordinary ABS. This is Suzuki's Motion Track ABS. And what Motion Track ABS is, it's their proprietary system. So they have what they have, sorry about that guys. They have a Bosch sourced IMU. So what that chip does is it gives the motorcycle positional awareness in relation to its pitch, yaw, and roll. So no matter if you're braking, accelerating, leaning in a, tur a turn, steering the bike right or left, the motorcycle knows where it's at in relation to space. And that IMU along with the wheel speed sensors on each wheel feeds the ECU data. So let's say you're braking very hard with the front brake and the system calculates that you are applying or the brake pressure is too much for the position of the motorcycle. Well, it'll actually take away brake pressure to help maintain uh, the stability of the motorcycle. Also, let's say you're riding and you use too much front brake. You're giving the motorcycle too much front brake based on the conditions. Well, it'll actually take away a little bit of that pressure from the front brake and apply it to the rear brake pedal to help you stop. And when it's functioning, it's fully seamless, like you can't even really feel it, barely. So it's actually a very, very nice system and Suzuki did a good job with it. It's very well engineered. My only gripe in that regard is you can't manually disable it. So if you're riding off-road or you wanna have some fun and do some slides, you can't do that because ABS is always on. So come on Suzuki, the European motorcycle manufacturers allow you to disable ABS manually, why can't you do it on this bike? It really limits its off-road prowess. One of the things I really like about this motorcycle next to the engine is just the chassis and the suspension. It it just glides over the road so nicely. This, this suspension is not the latest and greatest uh, kit, but it just works so good. The chassis is so poised on this bike. Here's a turn, I love turns, thank God. You gotta remember this bike weighs 566 pounds, but on the road it doesn't even feel like it weighs close to that. It handles so well. Six point three inches of travel front and rear. The suspension's not going to be so adept at hardcore off-road riding. I would definitely take this bike off-road and have ridden it off-road and I wouldn't have any problems, but it's just not gonna have the sheer crazy capability of other modern ADV bikes that have crazy long travel. But still, the 6.3 inches of suspension travel on this bike, it works well. Chassis is very poised, it works really good on the road. The bike has crazy good road holding. You gotta remember, we're riding on on Bridgestone Battlewing 8020 ADV tires. So they're built for 80% on-road, 20% off-road. And they work 
really well on pavement. I'm actually amazed at how far you can lean this bike over. It's quite amazing. You do have to get used to the way the motorcycle pitches. It has a little bit more pitch compared to a sport bike or, or standard bike. But once you get used to that pitch, you can ride this bike very hard. This 1000 XT Adventure rolls on a 19 inch front, 17 inch rear wheel. These are spoked aluminum rims, but they're tubeless. So the spoke design gives them a little bit extra strength so you can hit small logs and small objects off-road but you can still run relatively low tire pressure because it's tubeless and it just makes things easier and and just more or just better performance more accurate tire pressure performance which i like it would have been nice if suzuki fitted an 18 inch rear wheel as opposed to the 17 obviously the 17 inch wheel size kick butt for riding on the street and on the road but these days all the tire manufacturers make such good rubber and 18 inch fitment whether it's road rubber off-road rubber that you're really not giving up anything by fitting an 18 in fact you're just getting more because that one inch extra diameter is just going to help the bike roll over obstacles and you're going to get access to the top of the line uh, off-road rubber so you know if you want to ride off-road you can put a, a grippy knob on there and that's the one thing I would do if I was planning on riding this thing off-road a bunch I would just really just fit a more aggressive off-road tire with a knob so it has that bite in the dirt all right guys we're almost to the motorcyclist magazine office here Would I buy this $14,600 Suzuki V-Strom 1000 XT Adventure? Well, if I was looking for a, a full-size ADV rig, I certainly would have it on my shopping list. It's not the latest and greatest adventure bike by no means, but think about that price, $14,600 and you get a bike that can literally do everything and it comes with bags and heated grips and all that stuff you know it's it's a really good value and at the end of the day it's going to do all the same stuff that uh ktm bmw honda yamaha it's going to do all the same stuff it's just maybe going to be a little bit more just get it done a little bit slower you're not gonna, you're gonna be able to take it to all the gnarly spots but you have to ride it in a little bit more delicate fashion and just the sheer amount of money you're going to save is just, I mean, you can't deny that. It's also important to consider the fit and finish. The fit of finish of this motorcycle is very high. All the components seem very well put together. The only real blemish in the overall fit and finish is just this little cable here that powers the heated grip. It's kind of un Suzuki like to have it just dangling there. Obviously, they couldn't put it below the throttle housing, but if this is my bike. I'd probably just zip tie it here so it's not dangling. But that's it. Besides that, this bike's a very well put together bike and a quality machine that's built in Japan. So nice job, Suzuki. talked about the motion track ABS but the actual braking hardware the radial mount four piston front brake calipers they have really good bite and good power the brakes have a real pleasing sensation when you get on them and the twin piston rear brakes actually very strong too so not only is the ABS very functional but the actual braking hardware is good too and this is a bike that you're gonna be able to ride pretty dang hard on the street which is neat for sure all right guys we're approaching the wheelie test you've got traction control already manually disabled all right guys let's see what it does whoa whoa I can't see anything guys I can't see anything but man it wheelies good 
Love this bike. Love that engine. Has tons of torque. Great job, Suzuki. Now let's back it in. Let's see what we can do with the ABS. Whoa, she still backs in. Look at that. She backed in pretty good, even with ABS. I guess there's no denying the compression braking of two coffee can sized four inch diameter pistons. Good job, Suzuki. Oh, the ABS somehow manually disabled. I don't even know how that happened, but thank God. All right, guys, we are now at the Motorcyclist Magazine office. Unfortunately, we're not going to be doing any Q&A via Instagram today. We apologize. Stay tuned for a future installment where we will do that. But there she is, guys, the 2019 Suzuki V-Strom 1000 XT Adventure. I like this bike. It's fast. It sounds good. It's nimble. It dances on the road well. But there's just no denying the exceptional value Suzuki offers in the adventure touring segment with, with this motorcycle. If you guys want to know more about this machine, hop on to MotorcyclistOnline.com. There's not a review on this 2019 spec machine, but I'm sure there's a review on a 2014 and up somewhere on that website. Same thing with Cycle World. Go there. Buyer's Guy is always a helpful tool to research some of the specifications of this machine. And thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.